بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله um, Good morning and uh, welcome ladies and gentlemen uh, Welcome to this report launch of Gold Standard The Future for a Stable Global Currency A report by Hizb tahrir in Britain The governor of the Bank of England said uh, at the end of last year that the world is facing the worst financial crisis since at least the 1930s if not ever. What we have seen is that since 2008, the world's financial markets have failed to recover from that crisis. Growth is declining. There are questions about whether the Eurozone will continue in its current guise. And in the US, the deficit and the budget shortfalls continue to be at record levels. In this environment, with this ongoing crisis situation, uh, what have Western governments chosen to do? They have chosen to printing of fiat money, more and more of it through quantitative easing and other measures, as the only solution to keep the system afloat. This debauchery of the currencies is theft against the people via inflation of those currencies. And so there is a need to present solutions um, and for these solutions to be debated. So we're here today uh, launching this report um, to present Islamic solutions which economics and uh, thinkers, whether Muslim thinkers or from the secular world, can think about, can understand. So really this report by Hezbo Tahrir today is significantly relevant in light of the current economic crisis. I'll hand over to the lead author of the report, who is uh, Jamal Howard, um, after which we will take uh, questions. Jamal Howard is an expert in economics and Islam. He currently lectures uh, in finance and an MBA program. He's had 25 years of working in the financial sector uh, and as a management consultant. He has debated with many leading figures uh, uh, across the world. Uh, here in the UK, he's debated with the former UK Chancellor, the former Finance Minister, Norman Lamont, with the current Attorney General, um, Dominic Grieve MP, and he's debated with Jim O'Neill, the chairman of Goldman Sachs Asset Management. He's edited various reports um, addressing Islamic solutions to the financial crisis, the oil and energy problems, and other issues. He's been a member of Hizb tahrir for over 20 years, and is currently a member of its UK Executive Committee. Jamal. Thank you, Tajim. Assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome to you all. The first point is why a report about the gold and silver standard and why now? Why have we done this? And as Taji mentioned, we have seen an unprecedented financial crisis which started in 2008. And here we are four years later, is hardly improved. We've seen According to the United Nations, world growth slow to a crawl. It's currently projected at 2.5%. We've seen in the UK the budget announcement yesterday that uh, their growth projections are down to 0.8% of 1%. And again, I remind you, we're four years after the supposed peak of the recession. It's just not recovering. We're not moving forward. Um, we're 16 year high in the UK in terms of unemployment. One million youth out of work. They're calling it a lost generation. Uh, the United States, the world's largest economy, is hardly any better. It's indebted to the tune of uh, $15 trillion, and that has gone up from $9 trillion in just the last four years. A $6 trillion increase. It is the most indebted nation in the world. Faced with this crisis, following, following the unprecedented bank bailouts, the global economy is struggling. And we are seeing budget deficit after deficit. And the Eurozone crisis, whether that is Greece, Portugal, Italy, Spain, Ireland, is just the recent tip of an iceberg. The UK is the most indebted nation in the world when we include its 
financial services debt levels and the government and the private sector debt. The only policy response that we've seen of governments to this crisis has been to run large deficits and to devalue their currencies. Devalue them by printing more, more money. This is not sustainable. <coughs> Yet, virtually all countries in the world today are doing it. It is a race to the bottom. It is a race to competitively devalue their currencies at the expense of the public. So every dollar, pound, euro in your pocket is wasting away slowly but steadily by these governments. And the confidence that these governments know what they're doing is also ebbing away. If we <coughs> couple this competitive devaluation with the enormous growth in credit, we are seeing a debt bubble, $120 trillion created in the last 10 years. This is also not sustainable. The world cannot sustain that level of debt and as a consequence is facing horrendous levels of debt deflation. Now against this backdrop, it's important that Muslims present the Islamic alternatives to this. And this is why we have put this report together. It's been compiled by members of Hizb Tahrir Britain, and it's focusing on the gold standard, in fact the gold and silver standard, as the future for a stable global currency. In this report there are two key elements. Firstly we tackle the ten key arguments which are most often used against the gold standard. So for example, the charge that it is inflexible and that in a, a deflationary cycle or in, in the downturn in the business cycle it's important to have the flexibility that fiat money gives you in terms of money printing. Exactly the problem that I've been highlighting. They also argue that gold and silver standard leads to high levels of deflation. Again, we present in this report evidence that that is not the case. And historically, over the past decades, when we had the gold standard, levels of deflation, uh, whilst they did exist, were small relative to uh, inflation. So we saw much lower levels of inflation and also much lower levels of deflation. The argument that there is insufficient gold or silver reserves in the world. We present the case that it's not the, the position, it is merely that we have too many dollars in the world. The argument of the cost of the gold and silver standard compared to maintaining paper or fiat currencies. Again, another myth that there is a well-developed mining industry which is working full-time in extracting gold and silver from the earth because it has intrinsic value and that value is not going to go away anytime soon. And also the arguments about the compatibility of the gold standard with a fiat money system. Well, most importantly, is compatibility with an interest-based banking or fractional reserve system, as we say. And again, we argue strongly from the Islamic perspective that yes, they are not compatible and that if you are going to maintain an interest-based banking system, you are going to uh, perpetuate the misery that we are in at the moment. And it is definitely not compatible with the gold and silver standard. And again, we present arguments as to why the gold and silver standard is far preferable. And lastly, we talk about Gresham's law, that good money will force out bad money. In fact, this is, this is a positive argument for the gold-silver standard, rather than an argument for these constantly devaluing uh, paper currencies. The second point that we talk about um, is, again, from the Islamic perspective. And it, it is absolutely critical that uh, people understand that the gold and silver standards is an intrinsic part of the economic policy of the Islamic State, of the caliphate, the, the, uh, the global Islamic State, as, as it is uh, uh, to be uh, brought back again. The key features of that gold and silver standard within the Islamic State are that 
it is a, a bimetallic standard. It is gold and it is silver. And these are freely transferable within the state, freely ownable. And the public has the right to own those, those assets in any form. If the state is going to issue paper currency, which it is allowed to within the Islamic laws, that paper currency must be 100% backed. So we do not see fractional reserve gold standard or gold or silver standard in Islam. We see a 100% backed gold and silver standard. Thirdly, as I mentioned, it is non-interest based. And this is absolutely uh, critical in light of this global growth of debt in the West. And to maintain a balance in one's economy, one cannot be constantly increasing money supply via an increase in debt or via an increase in money uh, via central bank activities. And lastly, that this credit creation or fractional reserve banking, as people put forward, is also unacceptable according to Islam and has created this instability that we are suffering from now. So in conclusion, I hope that you take the opportunity to read the report. It is downloadable from the website. You see the website, it's uh, thegoldreport.co.uk. Uh, you can download a PDF or if you're interested, you please contact us and we will send you uh, the printed version of the report. Um, with the massive interest in the Islamic world that we have seen, particularly in the last year with uh, the Arab Spring as it's been mentioned, uh, there is an increasing interest in the Islamic world in terms of the Islamic solutions which the Muslims are, are beginning to put on the table. This global financial crisis is just one opportunity for Muslims to stand forward and say, wait, wait a minute, there is an alternative, there is another way of doing things. That way, of course, is enshrined within the Islamic laws. So we're presenting those Islamic laws and how they solve these practical day-to-day -day problems that the people are facing. It is absolutely critical that we present Islam, including its economic and monetary solutions to non-Muslims as well in this environment. Because there is a, a great interest in Islam and how Islam will solve these problems. And this is a very practical problem, which unfortunately I don't see any uh, solution to in the short term. In fact, the governments are ramping up their money printing and this is an oppressive policy which the public is going to suffer from. So in closing, I'll just end with uh, the words of... Uh, uh, an economist, Norm Franz, he said, Gold is the money of kings, silver is the money of gentlemen, barter is the money of peasants, but debt is the money of slaves. Jazakallah here for your time. Jazakallah uh, many thanks for that, uh, Jamal. Um, now we'll open up to the audience for questions uh, and comments. Um, gentlemen in blue. Is this uh, gold silver standard compulsory or a future aspiration for Muslims? The gold and silver standard is a compulsory matter in Islam. Um, it is not compulsory that Muslims uh, carry gold and silver and use as their currency. Uh, you can use your existing pounds or euros, whatever you have uh, that, that's acceptable. But an Islamic state must have gold and silver as its currency. The Sharia rules which is set out clearly in the Qur'an and the Sunnah, indicate that there was no other standard used in Islam. <clears throat> so that is a requirement of the state. And when the state returns, it will return to uh, a fully gold and silver standard. Okay. Uh, gentlemen <coughs> in the brown suit. What makes you think that the U.S. is going to allow a new gold-silver standard in the world? They did away with the last gold standard in 1971 and have done well out of the US dollar as the world standard? So it's a good point. Um, <coughs> in 1971, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Richard Nixon took uh, the world unilaterally off the gold standard. We had up until then, in the post-World War II period, uh, the Bretton Woods standard, which was basically that uh, the US dollar was backed and the US government backed the US dollar at the rate of $35 to one ounce. And um, <clears throat> so the rest of the world established parities with the, uh, the US dollar. So effectively, everyone was using a gold standard, or, or there was a gold standard backing up their currencies. Um, <clears throat> now, 
it's correct that the U.S. has done very well out of this. In fact, if you just look at the price of gold today, it's uh, over $1,600 an ounce, which means that the U.S. dollar has rapidly devalued against gold over this past 40 years. And what that means is that the U.S. has had at its fingertips the ability to print money, literally to print money, from nothing. And because it is the world standard, they can get away with it. Um, so they will not um, easily give up that position of hegemony where they control that currency. But the Muslim world is a large place and the global financial crisis is a large crisis. And, you know, there are respected economists around the world now questioning uh, the hegemony of this U.S. dollar. Uh, even, for example, Robert Zalek, we mentioned in our report, uh, the head of the World Bank, back in November 2010, he talked about uh, maybe the necessity of returning to a form of a gold standard. So there are respected economists out there talking about its return. So I think America is not willingly going to be led down this path because they benefit too much from uh, what they've been doing with this, this uh, gold standard at the expense of everyone else, I might add, and, and indeed all these other governments which, which are, which are follow, following this policy. But the Muslim world needs to take a lead, and I think the Muslim, lead is, uh, the Muslim world is in a strong position to not only establish Islam, um, but to establish a, a new gold and silver standard. And I think that will be like a beacon of light to the rest of the world. Okay. Uh, gentleman at the back there. <coughs> There's a concern in some quarter over the location of gold reserves in the US and UK. What makes you think that fund uh, reserves in the Muslim world are sufficient and available for a new gold standard? Okay, so questions about reserves in the Muslim world. Yeah, I, I think the, the point is, is that with the rapid uh, decline in the value of these currencies, and, and again, we just need to look at quantitative easing. It's just a fancy word for uh, printing money. And <clears throat> now that the world is sort of caught on to the fact that quantitative easing is not a good thing, you know, the government is, the governments are using other terminology. We've seen currency swaps between uh, the European Central Bank and the US. Uh, we've seen uh, the Americans using what they call Operation Twist, which is changing the yield curve in terms of, you know, purchase of their bonds at, at, at the longer uh, end of the, of the yield um, market. So what's happening is there is a growing uncertainty about the value of these paper currencies, which means that the new focus is beginning to be, well, where, what, what do we have in return? And, of course, governments know that they have gold. Even George Osborne yesterday highlighted that the British government has 11 billion pounds worth at, at today's rates uh, of gold in reserves, which, of course, he was making the point that Gordon Brown sold off a lot of, of, of Britain's gold reserves 10 years ago. So the issue is, is that there is now heightened concern around the world as to where these gold reserves are being held, particularly since the Americans um, hold a lot of those reserves. They hold a lot of uh, European gold, some of the German gold reserves as an example. And there's concern that maybe in a hyperinflationary period, that everyone will need to return in distress to a gold standard. This is not what we're calling for. We're calling for a... Uh, a measured return to a gold standard, um, that there will be concern over that. If we look in the Muslim world, there is substantial worlds throughout, uh, so substantial reserves throughout the Muslim world, and we don't believe that that is a problem. But ultimately, you have to look at gold and silver as commodities, and those commodities are available on the, on the world markets. So you have to uh, keep a close eye on those world markets and, and ensure that you're in position to maintain the reserves that you need. Uh, <coughs> gentleman in front. Is gold currently over or undervalued? And what exchange rate do you expect this Islamic dinner to be worth on today's money? It's a good point. Um, it, it's not for us to try and assign values because what we're trying to do is if, if you look at the price of gold today, and you can look at a price of gold any minute of the day uh, around the world in, in yen and in pounds and euros and dollars, in fact any currency. Uh, but the point is I would, I would tend to say that if you look at the amount of money printing that has been going on in recent years, the, the stock of that money has yet to really be reflected 
in, in the price of gold and silver and some of these commodities. I believe it will do because um, in, in an environment in which uh, economy is not recovering, uh, where is the money going to go? It's either going to go into the equities markets or it's probably going to go into the commodities market because the bond market is, is now at a sort of a turning point. So uh, the, that flow of money which has been created is going to start flooding somewhere, which, which is probably going to start flooding into the, so the commodities market, including gold and silver. So I would expect it to rise. But that's not the point. The point is, is that when you have a fiat paper system which is not backed by gold or silver, governments can print as much as they like, which means the public is going to suffer. And the mere fact that gold has gone from $35 an ounce to over $1,600 an ounce in the last 40 years tells you that it's out of control. That's more than a 10% growth rate. Gold is not going up in value by 10% every year. The dollar is devaluing by more than 10% every year. And I think that that is accelerating. It is getting worse. In fact, the last 11 years we have seen substantial increases in the price of gold for that very reason, that the amount of money printing is completely out of control. Okay. Um, gentleman in front. Well, a new gold standard held the massive price deflation. There is an argument, and again, we deal with this in the report. Um, for example, when UK, after World War I, went back onto a gold standard, there was, there was a period of, of uh, price deflation quite, quite heavy. But they got the value of the, of the gold at which they went back onto, they got that very wrong. So obviously there has to be a valuation put in terms of the conversion of, of the paper currency into the gold silver standard. And, and they used an old rate which was obviously overvalued it for, for, for where they were, so that caused uh, deflation. We show within this report <clears throat> that there's periods of time, indeed over history, in which the gold sta standard was implemented that effectively inflation and deflation existed but was very low. So the instances of inflation were low and instances of deflation were low. So within a band of plus or minus 2% generally, which is perfectly acceptable. So we're not saying that there will not be deflation and there will be deflation. In fact, today we see deflation in certain assets. You know, so uh, it, it's not something that, that we're unaware of. But the point is, is that over the long term, it is something under the gold-silver standard that we've got much lower levels of deflation. So it is not really a concern. Uh, thank you very much uh, for coming. Ladies and gentlemen, JazakAllah khair. Um, <coughs> this is one of a series of events by Hizb Tahrir. Uh, Hizbut Tahrir is a global political movement working in the Muslim world for the return of the caliphate and we find that it's very important to put forward solutions to financial issues, social, economic, political issues to give a vision of how that new state will be very radically different and will provide Islamic solutions to the many problems facing human beings when the Khilafah state is re-established. Jamal Harwood, uh, our lead report author for this report, uh, you can follow him on Twitter. Uh, I'd, I'd advise you to do that. He's uh, Jamal underscore Harwood, his Twitter address. Um, he will be on The Gold Report, the website for this uh, report, thegoldreport.co.uk, uh, answering your questions and videos, um, updating his blog. Um, so if you want to keep a, a running commentary of how Islam applies to the different economic issues that are constantly coming up, visit that website, engage with Jamal um, and other members of Hizb al-Tahrir. Jamal, We'll be debating um, with David Smith, the economics editor of the Sunday Times, um, next week, uh, Tuesday, inshallah. Um, this is just around the corner. Um, minimal reform or radical change. This is the subject of the debate. Um, so, inshallah, we hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aids us in the debate. Um, Jamal just reminded me, um, Abra House 45 Crawford Place. That's... Uh, 6.30 to 8 p.m. next week, Tuesday. So make sure you, you know, inshallah, come down to that. Um, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aid us in uh, pushing this message. Very important, very pertinent to show the relevance of Islamic solutions. And thank you very much for coming. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.